Steve here um, once again and Steve and the cat who you can see in the reflection in the window behind and she may want to go out in a moment but I thought I would um, uh, do a healing video so I'm gonna start off by um, just making some suggestions for you to say some things out loud. One would be uh, to state out loud, I connect with my deep self and just notice what happens when you say those words out loud, what you experience. I connect to my higher self. I ground myself to the healing center of the earth. And I open myself to the healing power of the one. I release anything not useful to me now. And if you choose to have the hot doors on the seventh dimensional beings assisting with healing of humans on the planet. If you want to choose to work with them, then you state, I choose to work with the hot doors. And notice what you notice when you say that. If you feel something happen, then just notice what that is. So for a um, you know, I'm going to say a couple hours today, I watched some, um, videos, um, with Thomas Hubble, and that's H-U-B-L, who's an Austrian gentleman, um, I'm going to say in his fifties, I'm going to say in his fifties. And in one of the videos I watched, he was interviewing Stephen Levine, who is a pretty well-known trauma therapist. And I think he's 10 years older than I am. So he's approximately 83. I think he was born in 41. And I was born in 50, 1951. And so, I would, I, so the interview was mostly Thomas Hubble asking Stephen Levine questions and Stephen Levine giving um, fairly, fairly extensive answers to the questions that were asked. And I find that it is useful to me to listen to experts involved in the healing of traumatic episodes, um, to hear them talk about what they've discovered, and to also hear them talk about recent situations that they've been in that have kind of triggered them further. And I think triggering is the key to the release of trauma, not to go around triggering other people as often as you can, but to notice when you yourself are triggered. And I've learned very much from the trauma therapists that I've um, listened to and listened to their suggestions. So I was listening to, again, Thomas Hovell and another man who's last name, uh, I think his name is Terry Real, R-E-A-L. I think he's a trauma therapist, maybe somewhat young, young, you know, 50s, 60s, 60s maybe, trauma therapist. Um, and I think like his program is called Get Real, you know, something like that. And he does a lot of work involving his wife and their work in trauma therapy because both of them came out of traumatic or trauma-oriented um, families, which I'd say the majority of 
us, those who are very interested in healing, are interested in healing because they have a lot to heal. And I'd say most everybody on this planet has a fair amount of healing to do. And we have been going through this process knowingly or unknowingly. Those of us who have been here since um, 1997 have been participating in a healing process with a being named Abrahamanad, who I understand is the new soul of the earth and is here to assist the process of cleansing so that when the vibration of the earth goes up, we're prepared for it. So um, the work, the cleansing process that Abrahamanad has been assisting us through uh, completes on March 23rd of um, 2025. That will have been 28 years of healing, seven years physical, seven years mental, seven years emotional, seven years spiritual. So we have about 10 more months of the spiritual cleansing. So things are really active right now. From my experience, this has been my interest. This has been my work since really, um, since I would say, let's just make it simple, 1970. I'd say since 1970, this has been my interest just to get over my own stuff and to find a way to interact more peacefully with others, to find a way to become um, more functional when triggered. And what I mean by the term when triggered, something in my outer world triggers off a memory, whether it be conscious or just unconscious, but some memory response with a lot of emotions. And I get into a very protective state, protecting myself, probably my child self, from this world that's scary. So, so oftentimes a fear response, sometimes an anger response, sometimes a grief response, but it's an emotional response to the outer world. And, and if you've seen a cat just hiss, that's basically the state we go in. It's a protective stance, lashing out at the other who was so thoughtless as to cause us to have feelings. <laughs> How dare them cause us to have feelings, especially feelings we didn't want to have. And they looked at us a, a, a bad way, a mean way, or they gave us a look like, oh, how stupid, or whatever it was, caused this response, emotional response, based in unresolved traumas. So if you get that kind of idea that oftentimes these strong emotional response we ha experience in a moment has possibly very little to do with the person who helped to stimulate it because they had no idea what your stuff was coming to the surface and why you were aiming uh, an emotional weapon towards them to try to blast them out of your sky. I looked kind of like, a, you know, I don't know, Obi-Wan Kenobi or Darth Vader or, you know, one of the I don't even know those movies very well, so I don't even know why I'm saying anything about them. But I look like one of those people from a Star Wars kind of thing. Star Wars, Star Trek, Star Wars. Yeah, I've not watched a lot of movies in my life, but I've watched a few. And I don't remember them very well, so if I try to describe them, I oftentimes just get the name wrong. So, um, what we are doing today is allowing ourselves to feel what we feel and also giving me an opportunity to ses suggest some techniques for you to practice because as we practice techniques, we get better at what we're doing. Um, and when we're learning to deal with more emotions when, while they surface, um, one of the best things we could do is to understand the NLP, there's, it comes from other places as well, but one place it comes from is NLP, and it has to do with our perception of self. So there's three ways to perceive 
ourself. We can perceive ourself as ourself. So if we're triggered, we're that person who has these feelings and wants to lash out at someone who they feel caused these feelings. And that person feels lashed out at and they're having feelings and they want to lash out and then you see the cats going rear, 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 rear. That kind of thing is a trauma response. And if we can move from the self to the observer, the observer of self, as we get a cleaner and cleaner observer, as we go further and further out to the point where we feel like, okay, we're comfortably far away from the energies of this situation and can work with the energies more effectively. So, in the observer, in the pure observer, there are only two, I don't even know if they're called emotions, but states of awareness. One will feel curiosity because we're looking at something like, oh, we're looking at ourself having these feelings and being curious as to why these feelings maybe are so intense or why they're located in this area. Or, or also, as an observer, you'll be compassionate towards not only yourself, who's having these strong energies, but also towards the other, who may have been the one you perceive that triggered these strong energies. So as an observer, you have curiosity and compassion for both the self and the other without going into the energies of the self. Why, how dare you? or the energies of the other, how dare you, but staying outside of that and doing that as quickly as you can when it happens. Because typically in the past, we've gotten lost in the story. So the, the triggering happens, the story comes up with it. We start telling the story, you never cared about me. You never, you know, you don't get me. You're mean to me, I don't know why I'm with you, blah, 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 whatever we say to the other that up to that point may have been someone that we were feeling some close energetic feelings towards and feeling uh, energy moving between us. So I think that's enough for today. Just to suggest if you listen to this, you watch and kind of prepare your mind, practice going into this observer position where you just kind of move your energy out and notice yourself from afar, however afar that needs to be for you. So if it's just the length of your arms, you're out about three feet. And if you need to go to six feet or you need to go to 12 feet or you need to go to 24 feet, practice that. Go to three feet. How do you feel about yourself at three feet? Go to six feet. How do you feel about yourself at six feet? Go to 12 feet. How do you feel about yourself at 12 feet? How do you feel about yourself at 24 feet? If at 24 feet you go, oh, I feel an ease, or at, at six feet you feel an ease, or at 12 feet, or at 24 feet you feel an ease, or 48 feel, feet you feel an ease. You go, okay, that's how far out I need to go to feel at ease when I'm triggered. And if you get far enough away from it, you still feel the energies of the triggering. You're still aware of them. You're just not in them. The difference is I'm aware of them. I'm in them. When I'm in them, my body's expressing these energetics. When I'm aware of them, I'm just, I don't necessarily see the facial things going on like the struggle with the emotions or any of that. I don't see that necessarily. I just feel it from a, a distance and I feel it as the body lets go. Now I've taught an exercise where you have, you're triggered and then you come up with a story and then you feel the emotions and the emotions are very much inter, intermingled with the story. And so when you take the emotions and separate them from the story and you move them a certain distance apart, you can feel like, oh, 
I felt a disconnect of the story and the emotions, at which point you can let go of the emotions, and once you let go of the emotions, you can let go of the story. So that's an exercise you can do. So the exercises are notice that you're triggered, and if you've practiced what to do when you are triggered, then you may immediately go into this expanded state. If you've practiced how far out you need to go to feel comfortable with strong emotions, if it's you know three feet, six feet, 12 feet, 24, 48, or beyond, go to that place that allows you to feel compassion and curiosity for the self that had this trauma. That would be the self. Just don't need to be in the self. It's best to be an observer of the self while releasing these energies. You can do the exercise of hear the story, feel the emotions, separate the two, release the emotions, release the story. Or you can just do that as an observer and just notice the energetics and notice when they start to free up and notice how long it takes and it's worth staying with them if it takes 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever it takes staying with it, as you stay an observer and you stay zoomed out, you can feel these energies come off of you. You can state out loud, I choose to let this go and feel it release. You can do all sorts of little things that over time and the various videos I do are going to show you ways to work with these intense energy so that you can resolve them, which is the idea is resolve them, resolve them, resolve them. And you may say, well, why are you still talking about this after basically 50 some years of doing this? Because the traumas are still occurring. I don't watch the news. I do my best to not bring it in through the internet, the images of this going on or that going on. I try not to do that. I can feel some triggering when I just hear about this event or this event. I'm not even going to give you any of the events that may trigger me because they may trigger you. And you can go search on your, for your own events so you're not blaming me for you feeling these feelings. Now, if you're feeling these feelings right now, you can go ahead and blame me because you're watching me and you're feeling these feelings and that's fine. I'm not talking about events. I'm talking about the process and by talking the process, Kitty, quit scratching, quit traumatizing me and scratching the furniture. I'm talking about the events that may bring your stuff up. By talking about the events that may bring your stuff up, your stuff may come up. And I'm, I'm doing my best to teach you how to work with these when your stuff does come up. This has been very helpful to me. If you notice my face when I started after watching trauma talk for a period of time, I was kind of in trauma. And then by talking about it, talking about it, talking about it, I came out of that energy of trauma. Um, we need to learn to do this. We need to be able to feel the trauma, go outside of it and help ourselves to release it. And when we get good at it, we can help others to release it. And there's plenty to release. There's plenty to go around. And so let's just do our best to help each other when we can. And always, first and foremost, take care of yourself. Because if you can't take care of yourself, you can't hold boundaries with others. You can't open up and let energy move in, charge your batteries, charge your chakras, give your body a bit of flare, a bit of spectral energy, you know, liberate your energy, let it move, let your energy get big, and then you're lots of help to others just by being present, just by being there. And so um, let me know in the comments if this was helpful, if you have questions, any of those kind of things. I just felt like doing this little piece on healing right after I kind of triggered off the need for some healing. So that's it. Um, thanks for watching and um, may you have um, as lovely of a day as possible and now must go.